In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're taking our second look at using the blending effect. This is where you take your media clip and you use one of the presets available in or through CyberLink PowerDirector to blend it with another clip that's available in the blending area. One thing to remember is that when we're working with these, we're working with two clips. And so the first clip I have for this exercise, I simply took a color wheel on a white background and had it move from left to right. So we can see the contrast between white background, black background, and all the colors in the color spectrum. So what we're going to do is blend this. Again, you can blend it in one of two ways. You can blend it on the timeline or right in the media room. I'll blend this in the media room by clicking on it. Then I can click either on the plugins word at the menu at the top or I can click on the icon of the puzzle piece, which gets me to the same menu. Once I'm at that menu, I choose Blending Effect. And then I look at the presets that are available in my copy of PowerDirector in my Blending Effect window. I have a host of them here. We're going to start out with one I downloaded from Director Zone for the other tutorial as well, called Light Leak Top. I'll click on that, and it will pull it in with a preset definition of lighten and opacity of 78%. I want to remind myself exactly what this clip does, so I'm going to drag the opacity up near 100% and change the blending mode to normal. That will make the light leak transition that I'm using here dominant on the screen. It will basically overwrite the color wheel below it. I can back it out a little bit if I don't want to see it quite so distinct. But if I play here, I'm going to basically, in the normal mode, see what my blending is doing. And here you see the results. Now again, a reminder is that if the source clip is longer than the blending clip, and they often are, it will simply loop the blending clip in your project. Let's move to a frame where we can see some contrast. Right here, looks like a good place to go. And here we have a little bit of light on the left, lighter colors on the right. Let's go from normal to one of the other options. We looked at normal and darken. Let's see what multiply does. When I click on multiply, what it does is it takes the darkest pixels in the preset and then it takes the lightest pixels and they become transparent. So here we have some light pixels and they become more transparent so you see the natural color and the darker pixels elsewhere tend to change the color of the white to more of a gray or a gray blue and it changes the colors on the left side of the color wheel in particular. It doesn't do anything with black when you use the multiply. And if I slide it down, you watch what happens as I turn it off and the difference. And then I turn the opacity up and you see more the impact that it has on the image that you're blending it with. So that's what Multiply does. Let's look at another one. The other, another one we have is called Lighten. Now Lighten is different. You notice that when I use the Lighten transition, it affects the black areas in the source uh, video file. So I have my lighter colors over here, lighter on the right, you know, kind of a washed out color uh, where the white is. So the lighten is the opposite obviously of the darken that we have. So we have the light pixels in the blending clip which is our modified clip over here and it, how it interacts with our source clip which is the color wheel. Uh, let's look at another one. The next one we have is called Screen. Now when I click on Screen, it takes the lightest pixels in my preset and it turns the darkest pixels in the preset to transparent. So wherever I had my preset darker pixels, they indeed would be transparent. Let's go to another frame here in my uh, video and you see it a little bit more clearly over here where the lightest pixels actually override the black in the source video and the darker pixels become transparent and you see clearly through. The next option is Overlay. 
and I find Overlay to be the most confusing of all of them. When I click on Overlay, here is the result, and according to the PDF manual in PowerDirector, it says when you blend clips this way, for darker pixels, it's blending them like multiply, and lighter pixels, it blends them like screen. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I've looked at it over and over to try to make it clear in my head, but I can't tell exactly what the difference it is. But here's an example on the screen where you see the pixels in the color wheel in particular changing when we're in the overlay mode. Now, one I understand better is one called difference. And when we're looking at difference, what it does is it takes the pixel color of your original video, our color wheel here, and subtracts the pixel color of your blending option that you selected on the left side. So it's doing some pixel math here to make the changes when it comes to the difference between the two. And you notice it affects both the light areas and the dark areas. One of the most unique ones is one called Hue. When I take the Hue one and play that, we'll move back a bit. Let's turn our opacity all the way up to 100%. What the Hue does, it takes the lightness and saturation of the source image and it retains them, but then it, it adds the hue of the blending effect. So that's a rather interesting option. And again, when you take all of these and all of the options for many of the blending effects that you have, you find that you can do all kinds of very interesting things with the objects that you have on the screen. Let's try another one here. Let's try the white noise. And the default in that case is overlay. Let's see what happens when we go to difference. And that's a very interesting look. So definitely the blending modes are elements that you can experiment with. Now when you're done with your blending mode and you have it the way you want, we'll go back to our light leak. And let's go to uh, difference just for fun. And crank the opacity up to 100%. Here's what we're going to see. I'm going to click on OK. And when I click on OK, what it does, it takes my original video, puts it on the timeline, then it takes my blending clip and puts that on the timeline. But you notice what I have here. It multiplies it. Now, if I want to change it, I can click on each of the individual segments and edit them. I, but I don't have the same flexibility I did before because now I'm back into my PIP designer. I can change, for example, the opacity. Right now it's 100%. I can change this down into the low 70s and click on OK. Or I can change the opacity by moving the little green line up and down with my arrow. But if I'm going to do that, I have to do it for each of the segments or they're going to look different when I bounce from one to the other. So what I found is if I'm going to make modifications for my blending, the, the safest way to do it is to do it right the first time or simply redo it in cases where uh, it's not satisfactory. Otherwise, I'm doing multiple clips multiple times to try to get them all the same. But those are some of the ways in which you can use the blending effects in CyberLink PowerDirector.